Welcome to Educator.com. In today's lesson, we're going to be covering um, the final stages of the website development, and that's really testing the websites. We're going to basically go through a few different browsers uh, that I have here uh, set up to kind of see what some differences could be, um, learn how to test websites, and I'm going to give a brief overview of what it could be. Definitely, it, it will be brief at once. It's not going to be an extended version. If you're going to be doing a much bigger project, it would be much longer. And then um, what the users test, what uh, basically does testing really mean? Um, as you go through and develop, like what are you going to ask? What are some of the things you will you be looking for? So browser testing, uh, live browser testing is something that you need to do. Um, not everyone's going to use your same settings that you're developing for. So as you go through, keep in mind that there how many browsers are out there, and they're all written a little bit differently, and they interpret the language that you write differently. So it's always best to use the best um, coding ethics as, uh, as possible. That way, it, it works across all the browsers. And the, there's a couple major browsers that um, might give you some trouble with a couple things, and you just got to do some research and actually um, go ahead and uh, add those fixes or change the, um, your coding to see if it will um, apply to all the browsers or majority of the browsers. Um, here I provided a uh, browser uh, service testing. It's actually something um, I've used a couple times before just to see how it worked and um, it's not too bad actually. It works pretty well um, in case you don't have all these browsers. <clears throat> so let's go to the actual website. And Browser Shots basically um, allows you to put your URL in so after you get everything uploaded to your server and, and you're, you've tested that portion out and it works um, you gotta see if this works across browsers and I definitely uh, this is just one uh, resource that you can use I thought it was you know cover it quite a bit and what it basically does is it takes a snapshot of your of the URL that you give it so if it's your home page you give it or if it's uh, you you put in the URL here you know, to a specific page, you want to see how that looks, you can do that. You, the, you sign up for a free account, um, basically check off all these different browsers that um, are out there and, and the different versions, because again, not everyone's going to use the same browser and not everyone's going to use, uh, may, might have their browser up to date. Um, I still know people today who are still using Explorer 6 uh, just because they, you know, they don't want to upgrade to anything else. They like the way it looks. So. Um, definitely keep that in mind that you're trying to cover uh, a broad spectrum of users out there who potentially are going to be viewing your site through you know, basically a set of different set of glasses. And <clears throat> with this, what this does is um, it's going to take a snapshot. And when you set, sign up for an account, it's going to send you all these. Um, it's going to show you like in the website. Uh, all these different shots of, of your browser. You get to compare and look at, okay, this might be right, this might not be right. That is something that's kind of helpful um, in case, again, if you don't have all these, you know, they, they cover the, the Mac and Windows and uh, Linux versions, uh, the different browsers that are out there. It's not too bad, it does, does a pretty decent job. Um, I pretty much uh, have about f uh, four different browsers loaded on my computer. I do run a PC and a Mac. Uh, on the same system to kind of just so I can compare those uh, browsers uh, and see what things look like, especially something like Explorer, who uh, you know has been a little bit late to the party as far as adapting to all these CSS that we, um, all these you know new features that we have with CSS3. It's getting there, and the new updates with the browsers that when people start to update more and more, um, they'll, they'll correct it and they'll be able to see what you hopefully intended them to see. Okay, so we'll go ahead and. and Minute or go into the actual um, go back to our page here now we know what this looks like in um, the Firefox browser we've been using this uh, since we started the project and we know what this looks like and and how it displays um, different products now one thing to remember here is uh, we're going to use we're going to go go through the browser that we actually have here live and that's the um, we have uh, Safari here uh, to look at as well and um, another browser here to give you a comparison. So here in this browser, Opera, Opera we have the, um, it's, we, I, I loaded it in and I wanted to see what it looked like. It actually, um, when I compared them both, they actually looked exactly the same. So 
I was successful of writing um, code that actually worked um, in this browser without really anything changing. It actually um, stayed the same. Now, what could happen if you're if you asking yourself this question, like, okay, what does he mean? Uh, you know, it can look different. If the language is not interpreted correctly by that browser, you could have um, different sizes or, or colors not show up correctly. Or um, typically, like in the box model, what this stuff is here, um, we create the box model within a box model. Um, it can definitely uh, throw off the pixels. Like it doesn't understand like you want it to be this this width uh, for some reason, and it might be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. Um, the placement of where you put things might change on the browser because again, it's not understanding what language or, or what you wrote. So having some ethics in the when you write code and trying to keep it, you know, very structured and very simplified, there's a benefit to that. And I talked about early on uh, when we first started the this class, is that we wanted to make sure that you understood, like, when you start writing HTML5 and or using HTML5 and, and then incorporating um, just some ethical uh, classes and, and IDs, keeping it simple. We really didn't write a ton of code to really do that. We kept it simplified. But people who use a lot of divs. Um, they get a little crazy with them. This is where you can run into a lot of problems because they're trying to like move everything and, and very specifically. And you got to be a little bit smarter with your code. Um, not to mention, it's it, you add a lot more uh, stuff to look at and it's get a little bit complicated. So um, that's that's this browser. Now let's look at Safari. Um, and Safari does a really good job of keeping up to date um, on browsers or on the the code and the CSS and how it interprets it. So very similar, uh, there was really no changes um, in this. It was really the same. It kept everything um, the way it should be. Um, everything was correct. I know here um, this all stayed the same pretty much. Nothing moved and, and I think everything was, was okay. So again, um, another, uh, it was successful here. The other browser that I did check it in, um, which is Explore, uh, which we don't have loaded on, on here on this machine, is it did actually show correctly. It did, I, I think that it might have had a little bit of a different spacing by the images, but it really wasn't drastic enough for me to go in and actually change it. Um, but it, it kept everything um, per, pretty uniform the way I intended it to be. So that was, that was a really good thing. Now, let's minimize this browser. I'm going to go into basically what is... Um,